right, people, welcome back to more card reviews. So today we're we'll looking at an XC monster that is coming out in the UV Kaiba Megaton. So today we are looking at number 71, Rebarian Shark. So yes, yet another number monster. We're already going into the range era, but we're still getting number monsters. So it is a Water Dragon XC effect monster. Rank 3, with 0 attack and 2,000 defense. So... Not a big fan of those stats. Uh, maybe if those stats were flipped, that'd be pretty nice. Because, I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? Just sit here with the 2,000 booty and just, you know, suck up the rays? Like, I want to do something. I want to fight something, you know? I use two monsters. I want neg one on this. So I at least want to do something with it, attack with it. But no, no, zero attack. All right, so hopefully its effect is super good to make up for that no attack stat. So it is generic. It's made with two level three monsters, so at least that's nice. In effect reads, once per turn, you could target one number exceed monster in your graveyard, except number 71, Rebarian Shark. Special summon it, and if you do, detach one XC material from this card and attach it to the summoned monster as an XC material. So, I mean, if you're playing number monsters and you already have a number monster already set up and already prepared in the graveyard, then this effect isn't terrible. You know, it's really not. You know, it's sort of like a pseudo monster born for your number XC monsters of course it's only numbers uh and hopefully your number monster only needs one XC material to function or do its effect or that's pretty much pointless you know it's like yeah i can detach an XC material from this card especially someone one one attach one XC material on one one but one one needs two XC materials to do anything i mean unless i want to protect myself from destruction so like i said uh, this effect is good, but it takes some setup, and that's what kind of sucks, you know? It's not like I can just, you know, go first and, you know, tear a top, tuck a tom board, and go into this, and it does something, you know? It doesn't even really stand alone with a zero attack, so not only does it not stand alone by itself and it fights, but also I already need a number monster, XC monster, in my graveyard to then detach something back and attach X material. I'm glad that they added in that whole attach X material from this card and attach it to the other number monsters, so hopefully it can get some use, so that's creative, but yeah, it, the card takes some setup, so that kind of sucks, it really does. So, uh, that's not its only effect, that was one more effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard, this card is sent to the graveyard, period. So, if you kaiju it, if you destroy that battle, if you destroy that card, like each other, if you even gel Dogger on it, if you freaking, you know, pay 3,000 life and send it from the extra deck to the graveyard, this card is sent to the graveyard. You can choose one rank up magic spell card in from your deck and place it on top of your deck. Now, at first, I was like, wow, man, this freaking sucks, man. You know, I mean, it's nice that I, we're, there's finally a way to search rank up spells because, you know, there's a handful of decks that would love to you'd be like, hey, I would like a rank up spell, but there's really no way to search it. But no, uh, this card says you can place it on top of your deck. And at first I was thinking, like, damn, this fucking sucks. So not only do I not get the card immediately, but now my opponent knows what I'm going to draw into next. So, you know, so unless I play this in combo with like possibly like an upstart goblin, you know, for example, you know, my opponent kills this during my turn. I use, I, you know, I, I, its effect is used. I put a rank up magic on top of my deck. My opponent knows I'm drawing into that rank up magic. So, you know, it's not something you generally don't want your opponent to know what you're drawing into. And, you know, sticking what you're going to have to draw into can sometimes hurt you. Sometimes you want that randomized factor because situations can change. It can be like, oh, yeah, I definitely want this rank of magic. Then your opponent does a whole bunch of shit, turns the door around, and you're like, shit, I wish I wasn't drawing that rank of magic. So, I was thinking, like, man, this card sucks. I really wish I could just add it to my hand, just get the search, you know? The only way I just get the search, and I would also uh, get my normal draw, you know? I would get the, I would at least even out, but no, I just put this card on top of my deck, which is technically not a plus, and I'm just stacking my deck. But then, when you really think about it, this is exactly what you want when it comes to rank up magic because it's a particular card that you totally want to draw into, but on top of your deck and draw into, not in your opening hand, but you're in your draw phase. And of course, that's just rank up to 720. So, yes, this card does set that up. So, you can go ahead and, you know, put rank up to 7th one on top of your deck, draw into it, be like, ah, oh, rank up to 7th one. Ha, how did I know that I was going to draw into this card? And let's go, you know, number uh, C101. Hey, so. Uh, that's a powerful play, but like I said, you know, there, there could be situations in the duel where a duel could turn around. And I get they wanted you to put the card on top of the deck for rank of the seventh one and really only rank of the seventh one. But I think I would have been a little bit happier if I said, fuck rank of the seventh one, and I just added the rank of card to my hand and even out instead of just stacking my deck. So, that you know, that that's my opinion on that. So, there's a little bit of give and there's a little bit of take. There's definitely both ends. But like I said, this card is not really a standalone card, you know. Uh, the zero attack, 
the, the summoning the number monster back from the graveyard. If it's summoned from the extra deck or the graveyard, maybe we could talk, but no, only the graveyard. So you already have to have the number monster already in the graveyard. So this definitely isn't a first turn thing. And the whole put the rank of magic on top of the deck, like I said, it's nice that you could put the seventh one, but all I'm doing is stacking the deck. I'm not evening out, and I think I'd rather even out and get a different rank of magic besides the seventh one. So, and no, my luck, I'd play the seventh one in a deck involving this and end up drawing it in my opening hand anyway. So, yeah. So, uh, that's pretty much all I had to say about number 71, Guardian Shark. It's not the greatest of cards, but it's not the worst of cards. I see where they're going with it. Uh, you get it in either the Yugi or the Kaiba Mega Ten, so enjoy your multiple copies if you buy multiple tens. But I don't think you'll be playing multiple copies. This card's just kind of eh. So tell me what you guys think about number seventy one Rebellion and Shock in the comment section below. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Of course, if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe button, bell for notifications, and of course, I'll be back tomorrow with some more Yu-Gi-Oh related content. So all right, people, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.